Hey YouTubers, this is Tim from JLMiniatures.com. Um, just wanted to let you know um, that I'm still here and I'm still doing some consignments. Uh, this project here I'm getting about ready to show you is um, some bases I'm working for, uh, working on for a friend. Um, I'll show you uh, how I did it. So if you want to do it, you can do it yourself. We are also uh, going to cast these, so you can actually buy them from uh, from me. If you're interested, um, get a hold of me in the link. Um, each of the bases, these ones here are 20 millimeter bases right now and a 40 millimeter base. I will be doing 25 and a 50 millimeter base. Uh, this right here is a cobblestone um, that he wanted done uh, as far as dwarf army. Um, this will be for the uh, cannon, the organ gun, all that type of stuff for the dwarves. Um, this right here is a cobblestone, like I said. Um, trying to get a good picture here. Um, basically what I did is I used uh, this tool right here uh, it's kind of a spoon shape it's kind of just a dental tool is all this just for scraping and basically what I did is I started out and I went just picked a spot made a slight circle and then started making circles off of that working um, having this beveled edge towards the inside of the circle and going all the way around um, what that does is it creates uh, a nice rounded edge to each one of the the stones and then all the little extras just end up making little tiny stones or you know or uh, dirt marks or whatever you want to call it for the filler um, that's basically how I did that um, you'll notice uh, some of these have like uh, flat spots and that's basically just by pushing down on this and it gives it a, like an uneven uh, type wear so that's basically what I did with these here um, you can see these three here and this one here is a little bit taller what I did is uh, I used a little bit more green stuff and the more green stuff you use and you're pushing down on it the higher your your stones will get in like irregular size so if you use a really thin layer um, you'll get more of a a smoother you know flatter look with your stones more of like worn down so like these here would be on the side of a like on the side of the road these would be where the um, the carts and stuff like that would go right down the middle and make kind of like a rut you know kind of that that thing um, also with these once they're cast um, they're gonna be cast in resin um, once they're cast you can take and always add a little bit of uh, like static grass and make like the weeds are coming up through the rocks and stuff like that or in between the rocks so that's gonna look really cool um, so that's basically the only tool I used for that whole job and then uh, moving on, I took and worked on these wood planks, I'm trying to get a really good a good view for you here. And basically, what I used is this right here is uh, one of the uh, retracting um, razor blades. I took and broke the the blade off, so I figured I might as well just use this. And what I did is I used a pen that was uh, used, and then just split it down the side, and then. Uh, and then just inserted the blade. What this did for me um, with uh, with building the wood planks is uh, you take and figure out how many wood planks you want on each one. I did uh, four on a 20 millimeter base. I thought it looked really nice. It wasn't too huge or uh, too too many planks. And you basically push down, just straight down, and you'll bend it one way and bend it the other way. You pick it up, you move it over, you push it down, bend it one way, bend it the other way. That way it gives you some separation in between the planks. Because once you make your planks, you come through and then you make your little divider lines, which are right down there. You can see, you can see them right there. You can see the little divider lines. And that's basically where the planks have, uh, where they've uh, gotten ready to lap up with the next plank. And then there's, you know, pieces that have been, you know, scabbed in to make it look like, you know, there's repair jobs to it. Um, basically, after I got done making those um, vertical lines, so you do horizontal planks, you do the vertical lines to show the separation of the, the planks being joined together. Then what I did is, this right here is an old paintbrush. Um, it's like a 5 ot to give you an idea of how small that is. And I basically pulled all the bristles out because the, the paintbrush was no longer good. And then what I did is I went through and I pushed down right along the edge, right by the, the joint, and then that made uh, nail marks. 
or nail heads. So that's the way I did those. So just an old tooth or a paintbrush, and that was the way to do it. After you do the nail holes, you go through and then you start putting in your wood grain. You can use either an exacto or you can use just the uh, just a blade, and you just push down on it, and then get your you know get your um, wood grain in there like that. Just remember, don't go over the nails because if you do, then you just you just you know screw up the nails it's better to take and do the nails then do your wood grain then go back through you know along the edge you can see where sorry about that I just pushed the wrong button had to go and check it out with my computer sorry about that um, best thing to do is do your do your nail holes or your nails then go back through do your wood grain then come back through and where the wood has joined each other just go back through and just kind of lightly push down on both sides just like that and what that does is it gives it a separation plus it keeps your wood grain kind of carrying through the whole theme and what I did is you know I picked certain spots um, where I said okay this one's gonna have you know two joints this one here will have three joints this one over here you can see has four joints right there and basically when you line them up it looks really cool because you know some of the the boards will be short some will be long they'll carry on to the next one some will have a couple different joints in there and uh, I think that looks um, pretty realistic um, once I get them cast then they'll we'll see how that looks these are also on 20 millimeter bases and a 40 millimeter base I'm gonna see how it goes um, and then I'm gonna uh, carry on through there uh, also what I'm gonna work on is uh, brick bases so it's going to be, you know, solid style bricks. And so instead of the cobblestone, it's going to be more, you know, fancy, just more of the, you know, like a natural brick look. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them. I'd greatly like to hear them. Um, also, if you're interested in ordering these, uh, get a hold of me. Uh, you can get a hold of me through my email or do a post on here. I'm on pretty much all the time. I'm also looking for more um, conversion uh, jobs. Uh, not necessarily paint. If you just want me to convert a miniature, if you want me to convert a whole army, I can do that. Um, I can paint your uh, whole army. I can get you the miniatures and uh, save you 25%. Uh, so any miniatures you buy from me that you want me to paint, you save 25% just off the miniatures themselves. Um, I don't charge um, a assembly fee like some places. I just keep the bits. So that's kind of my, you know, my my uh, thing that I like to do. Um, another project I'm working for myself um, for, for myself right now is I'm working on my chaos. This right here is going to be basically a lord level character. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. This right here is the Minotaur um, axe. So to kind of give you an idea of scale, I just wanted something really huge. Um, you can see his face is a. Uh, I'll try to get as close as I can here. His face is one of the spawn heads, and then I added a tongue coming out of the mouth. Um, the hand right here is a Skaven hand. I thought it was really cool. It's really bony, long, long uh, nails on it, and it's got a ring. So I thought that was pretty sweet. Um, the lower half is an old uh, Chaos Warrior, and then the upper half is a new one. And then as you can see, I took and added uh, another uh, spawn head with the big, huge horn coming out of the side of his uh, face. So basically, he's got three horns and basically two heads. So he's going to be probably a, probably another Nurgle guy. You know I me. Mean? I like the Nurgle, so I'm going to stick with it. Um, this guy here, his mount, I haven't quite finished yet. I'm still working on. Um, he is a Minotaur head that I've shaved down and I've added the horns to it now because I decided the horns look pretty good. Um, a cold one body, this is the old cold ones. And then um, these are the spawn arms. I really like the way that they look, like they're reaching out trying to grab. So that's why I'm going to go with that. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to take and um, scratch build um, some kind of uh, saddle to them or just use it as like a pack, um, pack animal but that's pretty much where I'm at right now with him. I work on him every so often when I get an idea and I take and keep adding a little bit more to him. So 
that's pretty much where I'm at. I've decided if I go with the shoulder blade or the shoulder pads, I'm gonna take and use the uh, the skull ones. I think those look fabulous, so I think that'll fit my theme pretty good. So if you have any comments, uh, get a hold of me. If you're interested in me doing some work for you, um, I definitely have time. I just finished up a Beastman Army uh, for one of my friends, and uh, right now I'm just working on the bases to keep busy. Thank you very much for your time. Again, this is Tim at jlminiatures.com. Thanks.